Back we're doing a TV show called Crazy Lake with Johnny Melwater. And he came Woo! up never done stand before he was a writer. And he actually just sat down and tried comedy writing for the first time. And his mind works in ways I've never seen before. And I think he's going to be one of the great minds of comedy. And uh, I know he's going to entertain you tonight. Uh, he, he's also kind of an inspiration because he actually transitioned from childhood obesity by moving into adult obesity. Which is <laughs> so please welcome Mendes! <laughs> So uh, I took the 23andMe DNA test and got my results back. I am 99% Jewish, as you would expect, <laughs> and 1% Sub-Saharan African. <laughs> so part of me is intelligent, money motivated, and has been persecuted for hundreds of years. The other part is Jewish. <laughs> and it is genetically impossible for me to leave a tip. I can say that, I'm sub-Saharan. But not all stereotypes are accurate. There's actually one going around about Jewish men not having much to work with downstairs, and I really wanted to bust this myth, so I did some research. I did. Lots of research. And here's what I learned. All Jewish dicks are the same small size. But they all taste different. <laughs> I'm not gay, I'm thorough. You, you know I'm verbal. now, but in my early 30s, I was single. I was single AF. AF stands for and fat. <laughs> and balding and short. I was the triple crown of celibacy. The likelihood of me developing a relationship with a cheerleader was equal to me developing an inner thigh gap. <laughs> I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, do you think I own a scale? <laughs> now ladies, I may not look like much in the bedroom, but I look pretty good standing in the middle of South Park Mall saying, get whatever you want. <laughs> and my size has actually helped me over time, so I actually got casted in a series of commercials, and my character's name is the before picture. <laughs> but I am trying to actually get a little bit healthier. I've introduced some, uh, some new things to my diet. Um, cocaine, <laughs> pot, and LSD, all gluten-free. <laughs> uh, but I think everyone here knows that there's only two ways for a successful weight loss. Um, only two things to lose weight. And everyone say it with me. It's diet and Amputation! <laughs> you got it. So last week, I told a Trump joke. And it divided the room faster than a migrant child from their family at the border. <laughs> if you want to solve those kids' problems, just change the channel. <laughs> And then I realized that I couldn't say the word Trump on stage. It's like the T word. You can't say the T word. And I'm worried, am I going to run out of letters in the alphabet? I can't say the C word because I'm a gentleman. I can't say the V word because I've seen what happened to Harry's po Harry Potter's parents. <laughs> can't say the n-word <laughs> because I can't run fast enough <laughs> so uh, so it's football season any football fans here Woo! football season is what I like to call two color t-shirt season and I've got a friend who loves the New Orleans Saints he's loved him forever and I said you got to change teams the New Orleans Saints aren't so good he says no I would never leave them 
And people's dedication to their sports teams is just absolutely ridiculous. And I told them, you've got to change one of these three things. You've got to either change your favorite football team, your religion, or your sexual preference. <laughs> and after a TV minute timeout, he came back and he said, I'm a Saints fan. They need me. <laughs> So this guy would rather have the just friends talk with Jesus. It's like, hey, uh, Jesus, I know you died for our sins and all, but, uh, but Sean Payton has really resurrected the offense. <laughs> <laughs> and sexual preference? This guy would rather fuck the New Orleans Saints than fuck the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um... I was looking to buy a house, and that means working with a realtor. And realtors, they're like the golden retrievers of the human species. <laughs> Sandy blonde hair, always excited to see you. Oh, and they cannot wait to fetch the keys. <laughs> so uh, my wife and I, we go to an open house, and in the first five minutes, the realtor says, the owner wants 240000 but he's desperate. You can Jew him down. I said, you should at least hide your anti-Semitism until you show me the furnace. <laughs> but she doubles down. She says, oh no, I grew up playing the Jewish piano. And makes a little hand gesture. I said, Jewish piano? Lady, I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you mean like a Steinway? <laughs> and she's like, no, not a real piano, a cash register. Oh. I actually had to call my mother and ask her if we should be offended by that one. <laughs> and she's like, no, that's fine, that's fine, we've got all the money. <laughs> and then the realtor said, you are going to love this neighborhood. You are going to be surrounded by Jews. Surrounded by Jews? Ma'am, this is Matthews, North Carolina. The Jewish population is 0.4%. If there were 100 people in the room right now, I wouldn't be here. I, I figured her next selling point was going to be, oh, you're going to love the train station down the road. It's Jews only. And uh, it's going to get you all the German hotspots. <laughs> Hashtag Jew soon. Um, <laughs> so my wife is done with this. She's, uh, she's pissed and she walks out the door. And uh, the realtor at this point finally realizes what horrible things she's been saying. And she said, I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to make this up to you? So I jewed her down to 190,000. <laughs>